Hello guys and welcome to another video. The faded Fizzbone videos have finally and are finally coming out. Ever since my last video, VRChat has released one of its biggest updates in my opinion, the Fizzbones. Fizzbones are basically a VRChat replacement for dynamic bones, super optimized, more optimal usage for VRChat avatars. Overall, my opinion of Fizzbones is great. I've actually loved it. I thought I'd hate them. I really did think I'd hate them. Aside from the slight annoyance of updating all my avatars, I actually love Fizzbones. I think they're great. VR chat, double thumbs up on this one. You you did good. You did good. So without further ado, I'm going to be teaching you how to add Fizzbone colliders to your avatar. I'm not going to be doing a general Fizzbone video as I feel like there's already many amazing videos out there on them and you should go totally check them out. I want to focus more on the specific parts of Fizzbones and what they can do because there's some pretty cool things that I see them doing and I want to show you guys how to do them. Videos have been a bit delayed because I too have to learn about these. I was learning as I was going, like my whole brain was being racked. But other than that, I think I have a comfortable stream of videos that is going to come out within the next few weeks or month. So without further ado, let's get into the basics of all my videos. I'm using Unity 2019, the newest VR chat SDK, and the avatar I have here is by Little Lulu. It is no longer for sale, but I will be linking her shop in the description below. Now, let's get into the nitty gritty. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to look at our hierarchy system on the left hand side. We are going to click our avatar so we can get a basic understanding of what we got here. Fizzbones colliders are now marked with the color green. So all of these green spheres or capsules you will see in your avatar, it is what a collider is. What is a collider in more specific terms? A collider is a, I guess you could call it a, I wouldn't want to call it an object, but it is a form in which we can interact with dynamic bones. Dynamic bones is what causes our avatar to move, to jiggle, to flow, to wave, versus colliders, which is the only way we can actually interact with said bones. If I get dynamic bones and fizz bones mixed up, bear with me here. This avatar I converted from dynamic bones, so for those who do have converted avatars, you should be seeing that as well. But for those who just have straight fizzbone avatars, same things apply, nothing is different. I just want to include those who may be seeing something a little bit different. So we have shoulders, elbows, hips, we've got all the colliders. Head, neck, and shoulder colliders along with chest colliders may be put in place to interact with hair so our hair doesn't clip through our chest and neck. Head colliders are normally used for bangs and again for hair. Inside the arm colliders between the shoulders and elbows are normally used to interact with chests and so forth. Different colliders have different uses but those are some of the most basic ones aside from hand colliders which we all know. If you have a hand collider and you touch aspects of your bones, bam, you are able to touch those bones, you're able to move them around, it's super cool, a, a different sense of immersion. Or we can exclude different parts so we can't interact with those and, you know, save some optimization. Now, I'm going to be showing you how to add the most basic forms of colliders, but please keep in mind that these same steps apply for any type of collider that you want to add. It's super simple, super easy. So on the left side, at our hierarchy system, we are going to go to our armature and drop it down. We are going to drop down the main parts of the armature, which is going to be the hips, the spine, the chest, and the neck. So from here, we have the main parts of the body. If we click on the head real quick, we can see this green sphere here. And we look on the right hand side, we can see VRC Fizzbone Colliders. For those who converted or have a converted avatar, you will see Dynamic Bone Collider removed. What that means is that when auto converting through the VRChat SDK, it just removed the Dynamic Bone Collider and replaced it with the VRC Collider. That is okay to see that. We do not need to worry about the dynamic bone collider anymore. And for those of you who get straight fizz bone updates, you probably won't see that and have no clue what I'm talking about. Without further ado, let's get into the hand colliders. So now I'm going to be looking for the shoulder, which will be underneath the chest, which then goes down to left arm, left elbow, left wrist. 
and we drop that down, there are two places that we can choose to add a hand collider. There is the wrist and there is the fingers. Depending on what type of person you are, I'm more of a wrist collider type person. Some people choose to put them on the fingers. That is completely up to you. If we are going to be doing colliders in the hands or the fingers, I recommend doing the middle finger as it's just the center point of all the fingers. Now, we're going to add a collider. So we are going to click the place that we want the collider in, for this case is the middle finger, and we are going to look to our right hand side. And there is a place called add component and we are going to click that and we are going to type in the word bone. From there, we can see, for those who have converted ones, we will see dynamic bones, and for those who don't have converted ones, we will see the fizz bones. Dynamic bones, if you've converted it properly, you should see the fizz bones. If you do not see fizz bones, you are not using the correct SDK. Go grab it from the website. From here, we are going to add BRC Fizz Bone Collider. Adding that, we can see this big green sphere just pop up. There are two things, or three things I should say, that Fizzbones is now adding. We have sphere, and if we drop down to shape type, we have capsule, and we have plane. The only two I'm going to be focusing on is capsule and sphere colliders, whereas planes, I'm sure you can see interactions for tails and other uses such as that, but I'm going to be going back to the basics with this one. Now, for this case, what is the difference between a sphere and capsule? Well, other than the shape, it could be the usage of them and how the radius affects them, of course. So, for a sphere collider, it's normally generally covering one space of an avatar, where a capsule can cover a longer area of an avatar. So, for a capsule, you might want to put it into the arm instead of having like five different colliders in the upper arm part. You can have one capsule. Or for the spine, you can have a one capsule spine collider versus a bunch or normally what it will be is two sphere colliders. So we can have the one sphere collider and we're going to put that up there. Everything that touches this sphere, every bone, is going to be interacted with if this collider is applied to it. And I will show you what I mean here in a second. So now we got to interact with the radius. On the right hand side, we are going to see radius 0 0.5. We are going to interact with that 0.5 until we can make it itty bitty and fit it in the hand. So we're going to make it, let's see, let's give it a 0 0.9. Just go down because I even have problems with this until it's at a reasonable size. I'm not going to focus too much on the size for the uh, sake of this video. But now we can see the collider is now within the hand. Now there's two things that we can do here. We can move the collider so that it's in a different position, which will be our right here, different position or rotation. Rotation is more important for capsule colliders versus position. So we have the X, Y, and Z axis. For those who aren't familiar at the grid, the Y axis is coming down the x-axis is going to either side here, left or right, y-axis is up and down, and the x-axis is in the middle coming forward and back because we are working on a 3D plane. So for here, we are going to say, oh, we want this collider to be, I don't know, 0 0.01 places, that was too small of a movement, that is rotation, 0 0.01 places, and we are slowly slowly moving the collider wherever we want to take it up the axis. So from there you will start moving around your capsule as wherever you want, wherever you feel, your sphere, wherever you want it to be until you're comfortable with it. Now that we have this collider placed, we are going to want this collider to interact with things. It's a completely different story. Now by default, this collider really won't interact with anything. It is just a collider until you get it to interact with things. So in this case, if we go to my head, we drop down the hierarchy system, and we drop down this hair until I'm able to see all the hair bones, which may be under a lot of things if you're like me. Under all of the hair bones, we can see all of the hair here. I want to go to the front hair here, 
and two, I want my hand to be able to interact with my bangs. Now, because I defaulted all of this, you can see that these green colliders show up when I click on these bones here. These green, green colliders show up, and that is because that means that these colliders are able to interact with these bones. There's no use for that. I just defaulted it. Don't judge my editing skills here. <laughs> but now we want the hand collider to interact. So coming to the right-hand side of our screen, underneath VRC Fizzbone script of where our bones are, we are going to scroll down to this little tab that will most likely be pulled up underneath Collision. We go down to Collision, Radius, allow collision, make sure that is checked, and then colliders. We are going to drop that down. Now you can see that my size is already four. In this case, we'll make it zero, just so I can show you from the bare minimum. All of those colliders disappeared. In this case, I'm going to add one because we only added one hand collider, but if you added colliders into both your hands, make the size two. You will see another place pop up called element zero, element one, two, three, four, however many colliders there are, and it says none. From there, we're gonna click this, and we're going to see all of our colliders pop up right here. For us, it was the index or middle finger that we applied it to. Middle finger one underscore L, meaning that it was for the left hand. We click that and successfully all of our bangs here, all these bones, are now able to interact with this collider. You can do that with tails, ears, wings in this case, whatever you want your hand to interact to has to have that collider applied to it. And once it is, it will be able to interact and vice versa. If you are editing an already uh, made avatar and you don't want it to interact with something or you want to save on a little bit of like lag or a little bit of space, I wouldn't know what you would call it, but you just want a little bit less bones to make it a little more optimized. You can remove these colliders from being interacting with bones so that this collider isn't touching them and it isn't interacting and causing that. Or if you're trying to touch something like, oh man, I can't move this, but I can move this. This is the reason why. I really hope this video helped. It is a very bare minimum basic fizz bone stuff here. I promise we'll get into the cooler stuff later on, but I do hope this video helped those who wanted to learn a little bit more. Have a great day.